Hello, hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here with you this afternoon. Praise God. We are live. Welcome everybody watching the United States and around the world. I see many, many people coming on. Ohio, Tennessee. Oh, hello to our friends over the pond in the UK. There are those from the new UK coming on. Oklahoma, Washington State, Arizona. Praise God. Welcome, welcome. Shalom, shalom to our Jewish brothers and sisters. We love you. And welcome to our Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. And we praise the Lord for it. So I'm going to open up in prayer. We have a, we have we have some some interesting things to get into. Let's put it that way. I'm going to open up in prayer. I just have a few people to thank for some gifts they were so kind to send. And we're getting right into this dream because this dream, Barbara and I um, decoded it this morning, basically. I it, it happened October 27th. I sat on it for a few days, prayed about it. Barbara prayed about it. We finally came together this morning and went over it. Some fascinating stuff is in this dream that has to be spoken about. And sometimes we have to put stuff out when the Lord tells us to put stuff out. In fact, that's what we do in the prophetic. You should be anyway. If the Lord's telling you uh, to put it out, that it has to be put out, well, we answer to Almighty God first and man second. So it has to be put out. So let me open up in prayer. Uh, the door is cracked, so you never know when the dogs are going to come flying in. So I'm just doing public service announcement. The dogs may come flying into the office during the broadcast. And that's it. So let's open up in prayer as everyone's jumping on. And I have a couple of announcements. Uh, and then we're going to just go over the gifts quick. And we're going to get right into the stream. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, we come before you. We praise you. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Do your precious, holy name, Father. We praise you, Father God, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to the earth in the form of a man. Lord, that he was the spotless lamb. He was the Passover lamb. He died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his blood. That blood dripped onto the mercy seat and purchased us, redeemed us, made an open show and spectacle of the enemy before all of creation. Lord, we praise you that Jesus Christ rose again in three days, as was prophesied, ascended back into heaven, took his rightful victorious place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore. And we, Lord, honor that before you this day. He is our advocate before your throne. Lord, we just humble ourselves before you this day, Lord. Father God, ask you just to forgive us of our sins, Lord. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father God. Father, that the pull of the flesh would become less in our lives. So you, your will, and your power would become more in our lives, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, your presence Father God, would fill this place in Jesus' name, the presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God, in the presence of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, would descend, Father God, on this place, Lord, that the weight of your glory would fall, that the power of your presence would move, Lord, that you would lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus name, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we take the authority we have through Christ Jesus and command be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, thwarted, disrupted, blocked, nullified, voided, disarmed, dismantled, canceled, and destroyed. Every plot scheme, contract, assignment, weaponry, blueprint, attack, strategy, sabotage, interference, Father God, thievery, robbery, and the like, that the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, Father God, unclean spirits, weak, willing hosts, and the like would attempt... Father God, in any way, shape, or form, we command in the name of Jesus Christ right now, it all be broken, canceled, and aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, thwarted, disrupted, blocked, nullified, voided, disarmed, canceled, and destroyed, and their communication lines disrupted and severed so these attacks cannot be carried out in Jesus' name. And it all bound and cast back to the dry places, pits, and areas you have designated, Lord, to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return nor have anything sent to this place. Father, take all the glory for yourself, Lord. You are the potter. We are merely the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Father God. 
Lord, with every breath we take is because of you, because you breathed your life into us, Father God. And Lord, we honor that before you this day. We glorify your name. We praise your holy name, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Okay. So as everyone is jumping on, because we're going to get into the stream in just a moment, I have a couple of announcements to make. So we're, we just so everybody knows the gala, we are moving it to around the time of late March, early April. So we will be announcing that, but I just wanted to say that quick. We just had to move it up a little bit, but we are still going to have the gala. This gives many of you plenty of time to, uh, to make plans if you want to come. So we will be announcing soon the date for that. Also, we have a new member, a new resident coming to Ark of Grace. So we are making plans this week uh, for this new member to come. Uh, we will be doing footage on this. And so when this new member arrives, we will be announcing it. We will have pictures for you on the broadcast. So basically, we have a new member coming to Ark of Grace. So we're very excited about that. And we will uh, we will put up pictures and announce when this new member gets here, probably towards the end of the week. Okay. Also, wanted to thank a few people uh, as people are jumping on here so we get into the stream. Okay. I wanted to thank Steve and Barbara. Steve and Barb, I think they're in um, Alabama. A house is not a home without paw prints. Thank you, Steve and Barb. I will be putting this up in our home because this is so, so true. Okay. Also, Rhonda. Rhonda made this. Look at how cute this is. Ark of Grace with all the animals. We will be putting this up, Rhonda. I may even be putting this on my back shelf. So thank you so much. It's absolutely adorable. We absolutely love it. Thank you for thinking of us. I think this came. Um, I think this might have come from Pamela. But thank you for the pen. Oh, my goodness gracious. Here, we're trying to get this pen out of here. Thank you very much. I will be using it. Love that. And this is from, this is adorable, June Well. Here is Chet and Grace out in nature. So she made us a little picture of Chet and Grace out in nature, which I'm sure they would absolutely love very much. I don't want to put this on the floor because if Cyrus comes busting in, he might think it's a chew toy. And Tracy, Tracy from Gardendale. Thank you, Tracy. She makes her own jewelry. Isn't this nice? We can even hang this on the wall. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that. Lovely of you to think of us. And we so appreciate it when people take the time to do that. And I just want to thank everybody for that. So thank you, everybody who blesses us and who, who sends these little gifts. We very much enjoy getting them. Okay, now into the dream. Oh, my gosh, I'm heating up here already. Lord, help me through this. So. October 27th. Okay. I'm going to quickly tell you this too. I'm going to warn people about this. Be very careful. And I'm serious about this, about sending your children out on Halloween. This year, especially, I don't like it in years prior either, but I'm saying this year, especially, please be careful. Do not do it. If you can help it, do not send your children out on Halloween this year. Um, Satan considers this his Super Bowl. There is a lot of turmoil in the world. There's a lot of ancient demons that have been released. There's a lot that the enemy uh, is trying to uh, frantically um, tie up loose ends. And so I'm just saying I'm very suspicious of this death of Matthew Perry so close to uh, Halloween. The actor from Friends, I'm sorry, but that is way too suspect for me that his death happened so close to Halloween. So please, warning is being put out. Watch out on October 31st. You know, please. Uh, I'm just I'm just saying that. Okay. All right. So now let's get into the dream, shall we? So this dream happened on October 27th, 2023. So during the night, 
is when I have this dream. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I don't dream about President Trump often. This is not like this happens all the time. Um, it happens every now and again. I think the last one was last year, which was the, oh, what do you call it? The dream with the two plates and the plate of humble food, right? Versus the plate of rich, rich, heavy food, which I believe that dream had to do with everything we see happening now. So this dream happens October 27th during the night. And I sit on this for a few days. Me and Barbara sit on this and we pray before we sit down with the Lord and decipher what this dream means. So finally, we were able to do that this morning. And here's the dream. I was standing on a golf course. There were others with me, but I didn't know who they were. And I'm standing there and President Trump, he's dressed in a white polo shirt, a white ball looking cap and medium colored gray pants. Okay. And he's got on, I think it's white golf shoes. So, and he appeared to have a putter or an iron in his hands. I think it was a putter. And his hair was frazzled coming out of the hat. I mean, more so than normal. I mean, I know his hair has a mind of its own, but like his hair was frazzled. He looked worked up, okay, in the dream. He looked frazzled. He looked a bit unkempt. Um, and then suddenly I was zoomed into his leg for a moment. I believe it was his right leg. And the pant leg was lifted up so I can see. So it's like the Lord zooms in my eyesight to his leg because I'm standing at, you know what I mean? A good ways away, not too far away, but a good ways. And the pant leg was lifted up and he had a very large bruise, a black and blue on the side of the calf area. So to the side of the calf area, expanding the entire calf. So it was the outside part of the leg that ran the entire length of the calf. So we're talking about a big bruise here. And in the middle of that enormous bruise, there was an open wound. There was a small open wound that was beginning to open up. Uh, so I'm. So what happens is I see this. Now I'm zoomed back to where I'm standing at the golf course, right? And the golf ball is positioned quite a bit of a distance from the hole. Okay, it's on a green. So if you're on the point where you're going to putt, right? You're on the putting green of whatever hole that was. Because I did not see any markings showing what hole this was on the golf course, but it was definitely like the putting, okay, the putting green. Um, and so he was the golf ball is a bit of a distance from the hole. And President Trump is where the golf ball is, okay? Okay, first, okay, so let me put it this way. The golf ball is a distance from the hole. President Trump is standing a little ways back from the golf ball. Okay, so when I'm zoomed back from seeing the leg, he's standing a bit of a distance from the golf ball, okay? And suddenly he lifts up his club. He runs towards the ball with the club lifted up and he brings this club down without stopping right? So he's running and he brings the club down and he hits that ball so hard. It made a straight line like a rocket to the hole and it went in. Now, everyone knows when you hit a ball that hard on a putting green, most of the time it's going to literally hit the lip of the, of the hole and bounce, right? And not go in. This happened to go in, okay? And that is where the dream ends now, okay? So I see the ball go in the hole. The ball makes a rocket, a straight, you know, line on the ground towards the hole with a lot of force, and it happens to end up going in, okay? The dream ends. Now, what does all this mean? Because on the surface, okay, President Trump likes to golf. Well, no, it means way more than that. So... The pants over the wound on the leg, okay, represents a cover-up, okay? Now, bear, keep, keep with me on this whole thing, okay, because you're going to understand by the end. So it represents a cover-up because the pants 
were covering the wound. The pants were over the wound. The only reason why I saw it is because I was zoomed into it by the Lord to see where he was when he lifted that pant leg up to show the wound. You see what I'm saying? So I was zoomed to see where he was when that pant leg got lifted up. And then I'm put back on the golf course when the pant leg is back down. And he has this very large wound and bruise on his leg, right? That I know is there now. And he's trying to run at the ball. He's trying to run at the golf ball, which will open up the wound even more and make it worse, right? When you are fighting a very large like bruise and, 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 and potential infection in a leg, the last thing the doctors want you do to do is to run on it because it can open it up even more. It can make that infection worse, right? Okay. So he thinks it's covered up, but it's about to be opened up. So the pant leg over it, right? And he's running at the ball to make it look like the wound is not there, right? Because if he's running at the ball like that, you wouldn't think the wound is on the leg, but it's there. So he thinks it's covered up, but it's about to be opened up. And the Lord is going to allow it. When a wound opens up like that, it's usually because of some kind of infection that has to come out. As ugly as it may be, and as as much as, uh, uh, you know, as difficult it might be for that infection to come out, it has to come out in order for that person to get better. So as ugly as it may be, it has to happen and it has to come out. So whatever is being covered up, is going to be opened up because that wound was beginning to open. It was small at that point, okay? It was a huge bruise. The wound was beginning to open up. It's not going to be pleasant. It's not. And it has to do with President Trump, okay? This is a Jacob moment. Now, why am I saying these things? Because when the Lord shows me something, I have to say it, right? Now, not everything he shows me, I, I say publicly, I have to pray about whether I can talk about it, but this is something that is meant to be put out. And this is something I have to say, if the Lord is, this is something I have to say, if the Lord is giving it to me. Now, you're going to find the rest of this, I think, very interesting, the way the Lord broke down this for us, okay? Okay. So this is a Jacob moment. This is a Jacob moment. Now, why is this a Jacob moment? Jacob, and Barbara heard this. She said, this is a Jacob moment. Jacob wrestled with the Lord, with the angel of the Lord, right? And he got Jacob by the hall of his leg and put his hip out of joint, right? To subdue him. And once they're in that position in wrestling, they can't move, right? The match is over. And the Lord did that to Jacob. Remember, Jacob said, I won't let you go till you bless me. I won't. And the Lord finally got him by the hollow of his leg. And he kind of put that hip area out of joint, right? So Jacob would stop and submit. And so that is actually in Genesis 21, verses 22 through 26. And this is what it says. Now he arose that same night and took his two wives and his two maids and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and he sent across whatever he had. Verse 24, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of his thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. He said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. 
Then Jacob asked him and said, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. Now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over Penuel, and he was limping on his thigh. Therefore, to this day, the sons of Israel do not eat the sinew of the hip, which is on the socket of the thigh, because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the hip. So he put his hip out of joint, got Jacob by the hall of his leg, right? Why? To weaken Jacob in that moment, to, to subdue him in a way, to to basically show Jacob, I'm stronger than you are, right? Okay, it, like an I surrender moment. And from that day forward, his name was no longer Jacob. His name was Israel, right? He became, in a way, a new creation in Christ. Although Christ wasn't there yet, it's that same idea, right? Christ was yet to come and die for our sins. But right there, it was like it was being credited to Jacob, the righteousness, like it was credited to Abraham. It was being credited to Jacob, and his name was made Israel because he would birth the 12 tribes of Israel, 12 having to do with government and rule through his wives. So what this is about, now there's a, there's, a, there's a few points here I want to make. There's a few key points. First of all, this is about Trump wrestling with God right now and not submitting the way the Lord wants him to submit. First of all, this is about Trump wrestling with God and the ways of God and how God wants things done, okay? The, now, if you look at the dream, right, the way he ran to that golf ball with the putter up in the air and swung it down like that is a violation of the rules on the green in the dream. Because when you go to putt, you have to position yourself in front of the ball, right? Keep your body sort of still, just swing your arms back and putt. In the dream on the green, he's running at the ball with the club up and coming down without stopping. And that is a violation of the rules. If you think about it, in golfing, okay, there are rules when you have to putt. That was a violation of the rules. Not the norm if you're going to putt, okay? That's out of the norm behavior. And so, He's trying to get, okay, so if we think about it, right, if we look at it, he was trying to get the ball in the hole by violating the rules. He was still trying to get, right, the, the whatever it is, you know, par for the course, um, a hole in one, whatever it was. He, was. he was still trying to get it by violating the rules on the green, now, we have to understand something in here, okay? We cannot make it that anybody is perfect. And we cannot make it that, oh, well, well, the Democrats are doing wrong, so we can do wrong too, or what they're doing this. God doesn't care about as much what they're doing if they're not anointed to lead this nation. He cares about correcting and bringing into order who's anointed to lead this nation, and we have to understand that that he had to correct Jacob and bring Jacob into order to become Israel. You see, this is what this is all about. If Jacob to become Israel had to have his hip put out of joint to be put into order in order to birth forth the 12 tribes, then the people that God wants to try to get into order to lead this nation, if he wasn't a good father, he wouldn't bring correction. Does the Lord like what the Democrats are doing? No. Does he like what the Republicans are doing? No. They're both doing things they shouldn't be doing, right? So this is about the Lord showing from his perspective, right, what he partially, right, because he's not going to show the whole thing because that's what separates him from us. 
but what he sees going on here. So the protocol for the green, right, was not being followed. And there's a picture. So I found a picture online of President Trump at a putting green, right? And he was even a, a little farther away than the ball is from him right now, okay? So he was still a little farther away from it. So the ball was a considerable distance from the hole, right, when he ran at it. So so protocol was not being followed on the green because he was trying to do it his way and not God's way, Right? He was trying to run at that ball with the club up in the air, you know, with all of this, with the uh, anger and force. And he was trying to do it his way, not God's way. That's what it was about on the green. He's try, he was trying to fight in his own strength. He was trying to get that putt in the hole in his own strength. He was trying to do it initially in his own strength, right? And I'm going to read to you some of the rules of the putting green because I found this fascinating. And this is what a couple of the rules are when you're on a putting green. When there is interference by a wrong green, you must not play the ball as it lies. Instead, you must take free relief by dropping the original ball or another ball in the relief area. There, there, if there is no relief under this rule, if interference exists only because you choose a club type of stance or swing or direction of play that is clearly unreasonable under the circumstances. So they're saying if you choose a club or a stance that is unreasonable under the circumstances, you can't do that, right? So he had the putter, but he had the putter up in the air and he's running at the ball like this and coming down as he's running and hitting it almost like you'd see in a polo match. You know, when, when, when one's on a horse in a polo match and they've got the club up in the air and they're running with the club and they bring the club down as they're running and hit the ball. That's kind of what he did on foot on the putting green. Okay. So this is what we see partially right now happening in court to him. What we see happening in court to him is kind of what we, what that dream was. We see some of what's happening on the green. Now, by chance, that ball still goes in because the stance he took, the way he played that ball, right? The way he had the putter, by no means should that, should that ball have gone in the hole, but by chance, right? It goes in the hole or more by maybe, you know, God's grace and mercy upon the situation, it goes in the hole. But by chance, that ball still goes in the hole. So, and what this is about is when someone still tries to do things in a, in a, in a fleshly way, right? In an angry way, in a prideful way, and not submitting to the rules. Oh, there's Sadie. And not submitting to the rules. That is not submitting to the way the Lord wants it done. Okay. So if someone wants to do it that way, it's not submitting to God's way because God's way is far different, right? Than man's way. And the Lord's laws and the Lord's rules supersede man's. And the Lord needs him to do this because that wound is going to get opened up. So the Lord needs President Trump to stop trying to do it in his own power, in his own way. And he needs him more to start doing it in his way, in his timing, right? Spiritually in his courts, because that wound is going to get opened up. And we have to remember a man is not going to save America. Man is a tool in the hands of Almighty God. He is a tool that the Lord utilizes for his purposes. A man himself cannot save America. It's Almighty God at work and Almighty God using man as a tool that will save America. And we have to remember to keep that in perspective because sometimes we put our eyes too much on the man and not on God. And right now, the man needs to take his eyes off of himself and put his eyes on God. This is a Jacob moment, a Job moment, right? When all these things were taken from Job, 
What was he going to do? Was he going to curse God or was he going to serve him? Right? This is the, this is the crossroads. The same thing with Jacob. When Jacob was hip, was put out of joint, was he going to let go of God or was he going to hold on to him for dear life and say, I will not let you go, Lord, until you bless me. And that's when the Lord said, your name is no longer Jacob. Your name shall be Israel. And I know sometimes people don't like this because they want to hear what tickles their ears. But guess what? I serve God more than I serve man. I serve God before I serve man. And if the Lord is showing me this, then it has to be said. And this is what this is about right now. This is about a Jacob moment and a Job moment, right? And, 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 and stop trying to do things in your own way, in your own flesh, of your own power, of your own name. Because God's name is above every other name. The name of Jesus Christ is above all names. And who better to have you come out of this victorious than to grab onto and submit to the name above all names fully. Not wrestling with him, but submitting to him, to the name above all names. The one that sits in the highest seat of authority and the highest court which is above man's courts. This is what this is about. And I'll tell you, once that wrestling match happened between Jacob and God, because remember, Jacob had taken part in some deceptive practices before this. How did Jacob get the birthright? Wasn't totally on the up and up, right? He got it from Esau when Esau basically thought he was going to die and a birthright was going to do him no good. But then Jacob and his mother plotted to deceive Isaac. Now the Lord allowed it because the Lord saw where Esau was going. But Jacob and his mother plotted and they deceived Isaac to get the blessing with the birthright. And the Lord then had to make that right. By then, Jacob wrestling with God and God dealing with him so he could be changed to Israel and the 12 tribes and the nation of Israel could be birthed from that. But the Lord had to come in and rectify that because those things had taken place in Jacob's past. And now the Lord had come to bring rectification to that and correction. And Jacob was put on a different path or trajectory going forward. And he submitted to the Lord. After that wrestling match, he submitted to God. And that's why the nation of Israel was birthed out of him. All right. 12, meaning government and rule. But correction had to be brought for the decisions Jacob made in the past. That may have not totally been all the time on the up and up. And God had to bring that correction and rectification and show Jacob, you can't do this in your own power. Jacob tried to wrestle God in his own power. That's why God took the hip, put it out of joint, got Jacob by the hollow of his leg to show you in your own power, you cannot defeat me. In Jacob's own power, he could not overcome God. But with God and submitting to God, Jacob became Israel. He became Israel, you see? And this is what this is about. Stop trying to do things in your own power. And with the interesting part about Jacob also is that after Jacob took the blessing of the firstborn from Esau, deceived his father with his mother's help, took that blessing of the firstborn, right? Jacob had to flee for his life. Jacob left with nothing. Jacob had nothing. When Jacob went to, I think it was his uncles, right? Or his cousins uh, to work there where, he's, where Rachel and Leah were his daughters and became Jacob's wives. Jacob had nothing, right? 
Jacob worked for that relative. I think his name was Laban. Worked for that relative, right? Helped make him rich. So when Jacob fled, he had nothing, right? Anything he would have gotten from his parents, he lost because he fled for his life. But the Lord ultimately restored it back to him and gave it back to him. And so that is also another uh, moral of this, of this account here is that from whatever Jacob deceived or did things to get, God had to take it away and then give it back to him and bring correction to that. Okay, because Esau literally was going to destroy the chances of Israel being birthed. This is why God allowed Jacob to take the birthright, because Esau was going to destroy that because Esau had a preference for Canaanite women. Which came from a pagan nation and he had a preference for that. And so God knew that. So God allowed Jacob to get the birthright, but then Jacob and his mom deceived Isaac to get the blessing with the birthright. So obviously, correction and rectification had to be brought to that in order for the nation of Israel to be birthed. You know, there comes a point sometimes in someone's life because of things they've done in their past that have not totally been corrected yet, that God has to bring correction and rectification and show them all of you doing this in your own power of your own flesh, you will not prevail. But with God, all things are possible. Right? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. Submit to God first, then resist the devil. Two, three, he shall flee. There is an order to this. And when you try to resist the devil and fight the devil's interests in your own strength and those that are being stirred up by the kingdom of darkness to do his bidding, when you try to fight that in your own strength of the flesh, right? of the law, you have a hard time prevailing. But with God, all things are possible. And if you submit to God, submit to God, which means also submit to God's laws. Stop trying to do things your own way. God's got a better way. He's got a better way. And it starts with submission. And submitting to him, his plan, his purposes, repenting of everything you've done that you shouldn't have done, turning from it and not going back that direction again. One, two, resist the devil. Now that you are submitting under the covering of God, you have been given the power and authority to resist the devil and stand and resist. And three, then he will flee from you. If you try to pop those things out of order, you will not prevail. If you try to do things your own way, make your own rules, right? And not follow God's laws and rules, you will not prevail. The ball still went in the hole by chance, but I don't even know if that was counted in the dream because it was a violation because the, the, the rules of the, of the, when you putt were not followed. I don't even know if that counted when it went in. So this is, this is a crucial point, a precipice right now we are at. There's your way and there's God's way. You're at a crossroads, your way, God's way. Your way might get you a violation. God's way 
will bring you a victory where it prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies and those who persecuted you. Doing it your way will not prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Doing it God's way will. Doing it God's way will. Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why does God prepare a table before David in the presence of his enemies? Because David was not a perfect man. David was a very flawed man. A very, very flawed man who feared God and who would repent when he did wrong and try to follow the ways of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want because the Lord is my shepherd. I don't need anything because he provides it for me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still and quiet waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. What does he do? He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because the Lord leads me in righteousness, though I walk through the valley shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, O oh Lord, are with me. Why? Because I'm walking in righteousness. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Why? Because I'm walking in righteousness. And when I'm walking in righteousness, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not have to fear evil. For you, O oh Lord, are with me. And you are comforting me. And therefore, because of that, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and those who persecute me. And anoint my head in with oil. My cup runs over. There's an order to this. There is an order. If you want to have a table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies, those of you who want to lead in this nation, you have to let the Lord lead you in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Not your path, not your rules, not the way you want to do things. God's path of righteousness for his name's sake, not for your name, not to elevate your name, because God will honor you before men when you glorify him before men. It's to glorify his name. It's to lift up his name. He leads you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, for his glory, not for your own, for his. And therefore, when you go that path with him and choose that path, God's way, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You have to choose God's way right now and stop doing it your own way, your own rules, how you want to do it. That has to stop. And God's way has to come to the forefront in your legal defense, in your personal life, in your family, in your relationship with the Lord. It has to come first in all of those areas with your businesses, with the Trump business. God's way has to come first. So with your legal defense, with your family, with the Trump business, with your personal walk with the Lord, God's way must come first. Doing it your own way is going to tire you out right now. And that is exactly what they want. It's going to tire you out. It's going to strip you of your assets. It will in your own way of doing things. But God 
is a brilliant strategist. He is the righteous judge. He sits on the highest throne. His court is the highest. And when you go down that path of righteousness for his name's sake, he rules in your favor and the plans of the enemy and those who carry them out get dismantled. The arguments being set up in lofty places get cast down. That is what happens. And that is what this dream is about. You have to submit to the laws of God. You cannot do it your own way and think you're going to get the same result. Because when that ball went in, because of the way it was pursued to putt, most likely it wasn't counted. It wasn't counted because the rules were violated. We want that putt to count. We want when that ball goes in to count. We want it to count. We don't want it to be nullified, right? And if we do it our way, it's not going to count. If we do it in our own strength, we'll make a mess. We'll make a bigger mess. We'll use resources we didn't have to use. We'll tire ourselves out emotionally and physically. But when we do it with God's God's way and heed to the Lord and, and finally come to terms with the fact that we don't know everything and that we need to submit to God because nobody is above God. No name is above Almighty God. And we have to submit to him fully, not just partially, not just dabbling in it, not none of that, full on submission. It is not a weakness. Alpha males think submission is a weakness. Actually, when you submit to God, it is a strength because then you get to resist the devil and he will flee from you in retreat. It's a strength. Submission to God is a strength because you have access to a power and authority that man on his own doesn't have. But through God, we do. Through God, with a relationship with Jesus Christ, we do. As Sadie's knocking everything off. I know, knocking everything off my little desk right now. I know, honey, I know. Here, you want to go over here? Go over here. So this is what this is about. Jacob was trying to wrestle God in his own strength. The Lord had to bring a correction to Jacob for him to submit, for God to bless him, to change his name to Israel, to birth the nation of Israel. This is what this is about right now. This is what this is about. You cannot fight Satan and his interests in your own strength. I don't care how good your lawyers are. Now, your lawyers follow Jesus Christ. They can hear from God about the strategies, but you also have to submit to God in the midst of this fully and completely because the victory will be so much greater and glorify God if you do that. If not, you may be chasing your tail in the midst of this, while Satan and his interests and those who serve him and those who want to make a name for themselves try to tire you out. Make no mistake about this. That DA in New York is trying to make a name for themselves. You know who else tried to make a name for themselves by, by doing certain things? Nimrod. Nimrod and the people who served him, let us make a name for ourselves. And let us build this tower, right? And they're saying, let us make a name for ourselves by attacking the one whose name is on the tower. In a way, that's what they're saying. Let us make a name for ourselves right now. What they are sowing, right? Because there is not purity involved in this. There is a lot of corruptness involved in why they are going after this family. There's a lot of corruptness on the part of the New York judicial system. There's a lot of corruptness within the government. There's a lot of corruptness that is at the, at the helm of, of the desire to go after this family, right? And so 
them doing it and that corruptness wanting to tear others down that are political opponents in the name of corruptness and in the name of trying to seize seats and elections and assets. That's what those people are sowing and that's what they shall reap themselves. That's what they shall reap themselves. And one of these DAs involved in these cases, I am telling you, is going to have their briefcase opened up and all the bribes they took and all the secret meetings they had with those at the Department of Justice and and all the underhanded things they did in cases that they never should have done is going to come flooding out because that is what they are sowing. So therefore, that's what they shall reap. But at the same time, God has to be at the helm of this family and at the helm of the defense. God is our defense, but he's got to be at the helm of it in order to be our defense. God was David's defense, Joshua's defense, Moses' defense. But why? Because he was at the helm. He was leading the battalion. He was leading the fight. He was leading the men. He was going before them. They were consecrating themselves before the Lord, petitioning the Lord about when they should pursue. And then God would tell them God was at the helm of it. He was going before them. He was their front and rear guard. Why? Because they fully submitted to him and served him. Not that they were perfect. They were far from it. All of these men were far from perfect. Jacob, Moses, Joshua, David, Hezekiah, all far, far, far from perfect. However, they feared God and they submitted to God. And God brought them amazingly just baffling victories because of it. Hezekiah was in a position with the king of Assyria, right? Where only the Lord could be his defender. Where only the Lord could intervene and save him from that army, right? When the Rabshakeh came and announced, oh, if you people will only sell yourself out to the king of Assyria, if, if you people will only submit to this, to this pagan king, oh, we'll give you vineyards and we'll give you government assistance and we'll give you this and you're going to get a nice new office and you're going to, if you'll only do that. And Hezekiah God, Isaiah, the prophet of the Lord, and Isaiah, right, petitioned the Lord. And what happened? The king of Assyria heard a rumor. He heard a rumor and he left with his army. And I believe he was killed in his own land. So this is the kind of submission we're talking about here. Any king biblically, that tried to do things their own way, got themselves in a heap of trouble. Look at David with Bathsheba. David tried to do it his own way. Tried to not only, he took Bathsheba from Uriah while Uriah is fighting for the king, fighting for God, right? Fighting for David. David takes his wife, gets her pregnant, then tries to cover it up by bringing Uriah home from battle to sleep with his wife so that it'll look like Uriah got her pregnant. And then when that didn't work, David had Uriah killed in battle to cover up the fact he got Bathsheba pregnant. And what happened? What did God do? He opened up the wound. Nathan, the prophet of the Lord, went marching in. He went marching in to David. And he started telling a story about a rich man and his servant. And the servant had one little lamb that he treated like his, his child. And the lamb lived with them and he loved it. And this, this rich man had tons and tons of sheep. And when a guest came to town, he took the poor man's one little lamb and killed it to feed the guests. And David flew up in a rage and said, the man that has done this deserves to die. And what did Nathan say? That man is you, David. You, 
You are the one that took that lamb. You are the one that took Bathsheba when you had so many wives already. You are the one that did this. And God opened up that wound and it was ugly. It was ugly. Seriously, it was ugly, but it had to happen. And what happened from that? God brought rectification and Solomon was birthed from that. So you see, God works all things together for good. Not that all things are good and all things God has to deal with us about are good, but that God works all things together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So there are times God has to deal with something that is being covered up in order to bring rectification, to bring something really good out of it. You see what I mean? Has to happen. So it has to happen. And because America and Israel run in tandem, I would look for something of this nature to happen with Netanyahu also. Because America and Israel run in tandem. So we have to understand that there is a factor here of submitting to God fully and completely. Not that you have to understand all of it because you don't, but you have to submit to him. Lord, I submit. I don't understand, but I submit in order for the rest of this to be carried out. There has to be a submission and, and this that act to happen for the rest of God's plans to be carried out, okay? God is our deliverer when we cry out to him in all honesty and, 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 and earnestly. We cry out to him. He is our deliverer. He is our strong tower. He is. But it takes us submitting and crying out to him and saying, Lord, I cannot do it. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. And right now I am weak. And you say, Lord, where I am weak, you are strong. So I hand over all of my weakness in my flesh to you so you can be made strong in my life. That's what this requires right now. That is what this requires. And I will tell you, and Barbara said this today, which was interesting. She said to me, the highest compliment to God besides praise and obedience is being a good listener. Is being a good listener when it comes to what the Lord wants to tell you and what he wants you to do. Being a good listener and being able to listen to what he's saying. Really listen and then put it into action. That's one of the highest compliments to God besides praise and obedience is being a good listener. And I think that this is, I think this is, you know, something good to, to, to ponder and to think about and to pray about. But what I'm saying is people can believe in God without fully submitting to him. And God, for the sake of his plans and his will, can protect somebody that hasn't fully submitted yet because he knows that submission is coming. God protected Jacob from Esau because God knew that submission was coming, you see. When Jacob did what he did, right, God still protected him even though he deceived his father. God protected him from Esau destroying him because God saw ahead that Jacob was going to submit fully, become Israel, and have the nation of Israel and the 12 tribes of Israel birthed through him. So at times when someone isn't doing the right thing necessarily or where they're struggling or where they're wrestling with God, God can still protect them because he sees down the road. He sees down that road of submission. And he protects them in that moment, knowing that down the road, submission is coming. You see what I mean? Because he did it with Jacob, with Esau. What Jacob did what he did. God still protected Jacob. 
God protected Jacob. God protected Jacob from Esau killing him. God had his hand on Jacob, even when Jacob wasn't fully submitted yet to God because he saw, he saw what was happening. He saw what was coming down the road. And that putt that President Trump made, right? Was it conventional? No. Did it follow the rules? No. But when he did it and that putt started going forward, did it still keep moving towards the hole? Yes. So we have to remember that. We have to remember that. And we have to pray for him. Pray. We really need to pray for him right now because he really needs the Lord in the middle of this. He really, really does. And, and his family needs the Lord. And, and, and to understand submission and to understand what the Lord is doing through this. So just keep praying. Keep praying for him in the middle of this. That's what he needs right now. He needs that prayer and us praying on behalf that he, even though he may not understand fully, that there is full submission to the Lord. And that's a process. It was a process with Jacob. And like I said, God protected Jacob. Even always when Jacob may have not been totally doing the right thing in the eyes of God, but God saw down the road what it would produce. So he protected Jacob. God did this with many men. Moses, he protected Moses. Moses killed another Egyptian when he saw him abusing a Hebrew. Tried to cover it up, right? Buried that Egyptian. Tried to cover up the murder. And God protected Moses from being killed by Pharaoh. Why? Because God saw down the road, he was going to call Moses at a burning bush and Moses was going to go back to Egypt and be used by God with Aaron to deliver the Jews from the bondage of Egypt. God saw down the road at what Moses would become, what he would be raised up to do, what he would be sent back to do. Therefore, when Moses tried to cover up what happened, God protected him because he saw what was coming. So we have to understand sometimes God opening stuff up to is in order to push somebody in a direction he needs them to go. Right at that time, it was time for Moses to leave Egypt. So what did God do? He allowed that murder of that Egyptian to come out, which forced Moses out of Egypt into the wilderness, right? To be sent there by God and protected by God till the time came for him to go back. So sometimes God allows things to become uncovered in order to move somebody in the direction he needs them to go. Sometimes he allows it to become uncovered to make it so uncomfortable. They have to move in the direction God wants them to go. You see what I'm saying? So we have to understand that. We have to understand that in the middle of this. So keep that in mind. Pray about all of it. Pray about all of it because many men in the Bible that God mightily used were very imperfect and God used them. He restored them. He delivered them. So pray for him. Pray for him and his family right now. Keep them in prayer. Petition the Lord. Keep this nation in prayer right now. Keep Israel in prayer because like I said, events in America Run tandem with Israel. I would start looking at Israel's leader right now for a same set of events to unfold. So please remember that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are all imperfect before God, and we have to remember that. And sometimes the Lord allows things to happen to make us good and uncomfortable. So our comfort is in him, and we run to him, and we are very willing to listen to the direction he wants us to go. And we have to remember that. So that's all I have for today. Thank you everybody for, for joining us. I'm going to keep praying about this dream. There may be more to this dream. Like I said, this is like, you know, the first part of us decoding it. More may come from it. It's just, I wanted to put out today what we already had. So we put it out. So thank you everybody for joining us. I'm just going to put this back. God bless everyone. Keep the faith. We love you. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six. Psalm 91 takes two minutes. I say it every day. 
I also, uh, from the Believer's Authority book by Pastor Kenneth Hagin, Ephesians 1 and 3, I quote those scriptures that are in Ephesians 1 and 3 every day. The word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and the Lord means that, so use it. I also say the Lord's Prayer because there's an order to that prayer that is so important and it keeps that at the forefront of my mind. The order of when we approach the Lord about things, the order of what Jesus taught his disciples and keep the faith. Continue to keep the faith. Don't lose your faith in God because of the things that go on with man. God is far above man. And we must continue pressing in deeper with our faith with the Lord right now and growing in him so we mature in this season. We can't have stunted growth. We have to mature. This must happen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All glory be to God. All glory be to God. Bless everybody. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. We'll be back on later on in the week. Hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue, it helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. You want to support an amazing patriot that's doing so much for our country and be a blessing. You can go to mypillow.com and use promo code ARC, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or sometimes more off of all my pillow products. They are so much more than just pillows. They have amazing bathrobes. They have sheets. They have slippers. They, of course, have pillows. And they even have dog beds. And I will tell you a fun fact, Noble, our pig at the animal sanctuary that many of you know and love, has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you'd like to be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARC. God bless everyone. If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver is something that you should invest in, go to BH-PM.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who's been on Ark of Grace many times. He loves to answer our viewer questions. In fact, he's answered all sorts of questions about gold, silver, the markets, even the real estate market he's been kind enough to answer questions about. So if you would like more information, if this is something you would like to invest in, please go to bh-pm.com today. That is bh-pm.com. And I have to tell you something, they work. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and, yes, and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brainwaves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I plucked him out, and wow, he's boom. And he got power. I said, no way. And I don't know. I said, Amanda, what? What did you do to him? To <laughs> <laughs> so it's good.